Luke Byrne, on Sunday you lead Shells out as the club captain at the Aviva Stadium in an FAI Cup final. Has that sentence sunk in yet? Yeah, I think it has. You know, probably won't really understand the significance of it till I line out here at three o'clock on Sunday. But um, you know, we've known we're going to be in the final for a while now, so we've had time to mentally prepare, visualise it, and play out scenarios in your head as you would with any game. Um, so look, we're calm. We're very focused on it. Obviously, uh, we've prepared for this game like we've prepared for every other game this season. So there's a normality to our routine, and that brings a confidence. Um, yeah, we can't wait. Look, it's, we're like the fans. We just cannot wait now for Sunday. How was the walk around? Yeah, it was great. Um, great idea by the manager. You know, it allowed a lot of lads who'd never been here to, to you know, come in under the stadium, feel the size of the dressing room, stand in the middle of the pitch and, and see what it looks like because we've all been up there supporting the Irish team, but it's a lot different when you're down on at pitch level. Um, so it was a great experience. You know, now the lads have a few days to sit with those feelings and those kind of emotions. And, you know, with the idea being that when we come here Sunday, it's all a bit more familiar to you. I believe phones were banned from this walk around as well, so lads could take it all in. Do you think that would have added to the, I suppose, impact that a place like this can have on players? Yeah, you know, personally, um, it was kind of drilled into me from a young age when you arrive at any ground on a match day, you, you don't have your phone out. Like, you know, it's you're not a tourist, as Joey O'Brien said to us. So, uh, yeah, look, I'm sure lads, you know, might have wanted to take a photo or two, but there'd be plenty of photos taken here on Sunday. So it was more about, you know, feeling the the size of the stadium, the pitch, the dressing room, rather than um, getting photos for their Tinder profiles. Do you savour it more, given where you came from, how 2020 ended, how 2023 will end? Because no matter what happens at five o'clock on Sunday, like the progress the club has made, the place it is in now versus where it was at the end of that season night and day do you say with that more given you know how much pain you would have went through at that time yeah I suppose um, being through the highs and the lows um, the highs get uh, that bit more you know sweeter I suppose um, having been here in 2020 and, and um, seeing where the club was at um, you know the club wasn't in a bad place but it was just really feel like we'd hit a wall there you know getting relegated a lot of good work had been undone it felt like and we were responsible for that as players and you know there's been a lot of good work done by a lot of people to get the club back to the position it's in right now in quite a short space of time and uh, the club's in a really really good place going forward but we kind of had to park that on Sunday you know we have to come here on Sunday and just focus on winning the game because that is you know that's I suppose what's important to us it's with all due respect to everything else, but it, what comes from it, you know, potentially is great. But for us, we just want to win the game on Sunday. When you look at the impact the manager and Joey and Davy Mack and Paul Skinner and Mauro and Keith and the whole backroom team, Johnny Graham, um, it's pretty impressive what they managed to, to do along with the players this season. Yeah, and look, Dan, it's a very young team that had a lot of turnover at the end of last season, and it's been a total fresh start for everybody, you know. Um, New demands on the way we play, new training schedule, training intensity, style and play of play, formation, everything has changed. So um, I think it's no surprise to me that you can see the team has grown and improved as the season's gone on because we were all growing together, you know. It, it was never going to click straight away and credit to the manager and the staff for how quickly um, I suppose they've built all of that, you know, and how in particular, they've built a really close bond amongst all the players. Um, it's something that I've never seen in my career, and I was asked earlier how they've built that, and I don't really know, but they have, and that's what makes it so enjoyable to come into work every day. It definitely felt like not only have the players matured and improved throughout the season, it felt like that that maturity and that coming of age came from the management team. Because when you look at it, it's, it's a very, very young group on the sideline. How important has it been for for the development of the team that, you know, they're not the same people they were on the first day of preseason last year. Yeah, look, we've all grown as individuals, you know. Um, <clears throat> obviously, the manager is extremely experienced. He's, you know, been to the the highest heights in his career. But it was his first senior management job, so you know, I've heard him say he was still, you know, learning and feeling the role out. And, um, you know, I've never really thought about the manager and the staff growing and improving since the start because we get to see them every day and they haven't changed in that sense you know it's um, still the same intensity and demands and um, everything you know that they bring 
to the training pitch, it's been the same since December. So um, yeah, maybe when you take a step back, you can you know you can see that everybody has grown. Um, but when you're in it, you know you're just kind of focused on the week to week, and it's only is when you take that step back, you think, God, yeah, we've all come a long way together. I know visualization is a big part of you know modern football and what players do. At the lowest point, like, could you have imagined we would get to somewhere like this? Well, I mean, like you know, the lowest point being 2020, you're just focused on winning the league um, to get promoted, and yeah, if you're being honest, this is something that probably doesn't feel realistic at the time, you know, you're that far away from it and particularly with the cup loss against that loan that year, you know, you nearly just want to forget about the FAI Cup for a while because it was so embarrassing. Um, but here we are and the thing is we're very um, kind of worthy uh, finalists, you know, we haven't conceded a goal, been away from home three times, beating Bowles who got to the final last year. We've answered every question that's been asked of us in the cup and we deserve to be here Sunday. I think one of the moments that probably woke the entire club up was afterwards when the manager spoke and he just didn't seem as content with the Bowes win as everyone else. Everyone else was like, this is the highlight of the season, this won't get any better. He was very much of the belief that there is better days ahead. So did that clarity of, of purpose and that belief in what, how far he could take you and you could take yourselves, was that a big thing for you this season, knowing that you know, beating Bowes wasn't going to be the highlight of the season? Yeah, look, I think that's in the manager's nature. You know, It's why he's been so successful in his career. It's because he's probably not satisfied with things you know and he always wants the next thing and he wants to achieve more and be better be more dominant and you know that message comes across to us as players and like you know even when we've had big wins this year or you know perceived good results maybe a good draw away from home or at home to Rovers after the match it's not like a celebratory mood it's like now you know you, we can be better we want more we need to go again on Monday Friday whatever it is so um, that is part of our DNA now as a team and it's the same for the cup final you know as great as Waterford was and what it meant for everybody to focus immediately turn to beat in Derry City it's not just to come to the Viva take part have a great day you know wave to the crowd it's very much coming here to win the game on Sunday Who's going to be in the stands for you? I have a lot of family and friends you know I've got family from all over the country I've got people flying in from you know the UK from France and um, my mates to be up there somewhere as well so look that's also you know going to be one of the highlights for me is you know making all of them proud and you know my dad's been up and down DDSL sidelines he's been around the first division the Premier division and um, I'm sure he's going to enjoy Sunday as much as anyone else. When you look at what's happened this year you know the Shell's getting to a cup final comfortably secure in Premier division status never really been dragged down into a relegation scrap you're obviously on the shortlist for, for player of the year. You got man of the match in the cup semi-final. You played virtually every minute. When you reflect kind of on your long League of Ireland career, is this your best season? Yeah, I would say it is, Darren, yeah. I would say it is. Um, yeah, short answer, yes. Um, but winning Sunday will cement that as the best year of my life, best year of my career. And, you know, it's within touch and distance and, you know, not satisfied with what we have we, we're, we're just not satisfied with just getting here you know it's so close for us we have to just come out here Sunday do our jobs deal with the the atmosphere or the occasion and just beat Derry City like that's that's all that we have you know it's simple isn't it that's all we have to do yeah. but that, that's it not too complicated uh, the manager has told us he's not going to do a video this time and he said that the face has dropped a little bit when he when he shared that information how did it go uh, down in players yeah, look, I'd say we were a little bit disappointed because the videos have been so good. You know, <laughs> They've been like a big um, talking point amongst the players. Truth be told, they make you very emotional, but like that Are motivates you. Have watched it. them over and over again? Um, we've seen the back since, yeah, we've seen the back since. Um, but yeah, they were amazing. A lot of work went into them and they were put together very well. I think the gaffer, if he ever wants to step away from management, he could be a video editor. He's a bit of a wizard with all those things. so. They were very professionally done and uh, they meant a lot to us, uh, seeing you know, pictures of us ourselves as kids, seeing our family members talk, like it really pulls on the heartstrings. I wouldn't be a particularly emotional person but the video in Waterford, I was close to crying, <laughs> I was and that would be very rare for me but it shows the power of something like that at the right time and look, three videos, three wins. But the manager is very clear. It's, there's not going to be one on Sunday, and I think that's the right decision. You know, there's enough going to be enough emotion flying around this place Sunday. We don't need anything extra. 
I think when you're talking about sensory overload, he's mentioned players in the tunnel, he's mentioned the national anthem. Obviously, you'll have seven, eight thousand Shells fans down in the far end with an unbelievable display, plenty of noise and colour. The video might just be one that completely tips you over the edge. So, have you ever experienced anything like that? Is there anything you can compare to? I know you've played here in a, in a game before. Was it against Liverpool for us? Liverpool, yeah, yeah. Nah, no, nothing will compare to Sunday. You know, it's I've played in big games, like, but no, this will. This will be the biggest. Um, but I feel I'm at a stage in my career now where, you know, I'm not worried about how I'm going to handle it. I'm, you know, confident in my own skin. I feel like I've, you know, had enough ups and downs in my career and seen enough things that I can come here on Sunday and, um, you know, try and help the younger players ease themselves in. Or, but not that they need it, but, you know, just try and be there and, and um, help anyone I can. But we're all in it together and. We're just like the, the fans you said that'll be behind the stand. We're, we're really excited for it. Can you sum up what those three castles in your chest mean to you? Um, to me, they mean um, the best few years of my life. Um, captain of the club is the, you know, the biggest honour I've ever had. The players that put on this badge every week are my best friends. Um, the manager on the sideline is a huge influence on me. So, uh, Probably getting a bit of emotional at answering that question, but that's you know my whole life has been football. Darren, I've committed my whole life to football, and Shelburne have given me the most enjoyable period that I've ever had. So um, coming out here Sunday with the crest on my chest will be the, the best day of my life, I'd say.